Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a lake? With, like, water? Sky lake? So no, unfortunately, we're not reviewing a lake in the sky today, but we've got something even better. It's the next series of Intel processors along with the next chipset of motherboards. That's right, LGA 1151 and Z170. Way cooler than a lake in the sky, which is also known as a cloud. Because water condenses into a shape of a cloud. We've got two processors with us today and they'll probably be the ones you see the most often. The first is the i5-6600K, a quad-core, four-thread, 14 nanometer processor with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz. This is the exact same as the old i5-4690K with the only changes being slightly higher TDP of 95 watts and Intel 530 series integrated graphics. The story is the same for the i7-6700K, quad cores, eight threads, base clock of 4.0 gigahertz but a max turbo boost of only 4.2 gigahertz. Like the i5 it has a slightly higher TDP and updated integrated graphics as well compared to the previous generation. With a smaller manufacturing process but larger TDP we should expect similar temperatures but a higher threshold for overclocking. As well Intel seems to improve upon its internal heat spreader each generation so hopefully we see good temperatures out of the box without users having to delid their processors. But more on that later let's quickly take a look at this motherboard. This is MSI's new Z170A Gaming M7 motherboard. The biggest difference with the new chipset is memory. The new LGA 1151 uses DDR4. That means higher capacities, higher frequencies, but also higher cost. This particular motherboard also comes with three 16x PCI 3.0 slots, two M.2 slots, onboard 8 channel audio, killer gigabit LAN SATA Express, and USB 3.1 ports. Yes, multiple. It includes a regular Generation 1 connector and the new Generation 2 Type-C connector. It's too bad we don't have any devices that can use this port yet, but at least we can brag about it in forums online. No PCIe 4.0, unfortunately. There is one final change that looks minor on paper, but is actually a huge difference in real life, and it should have been implemented a long time ago. The 16x PCIe lanes are now metal, which adds strength and rigidity to previously weak slots. We would have liked to see the soldering and attachment point be reinforced with metal as well, but this already is a step in the right direction. It's especially handy since NCIX often ships out PCs with graphic cards attached, so this should minimize flex during transit. So back to the million dollar question, how does Skylake perform? Well, let's use Passmark's performance test as our benchmark. In the past, the 4770K was about 6% faster than the previous 3770K. Next, the 4790K was about 10% faster than the 4770K. And Skylake? Well, at stock speeds, our i7 sample was only 3% faster compared to the previous 4790K. Our i5 fared a lot better as it was about 11% faster than the 4690K. Anthony thinks we just happened to have a bad sample for our i7 as he noticed signs of bad IHS contact. When he stress tested the chip using Intel burn test, the temperatures would quickly spike up instead of gradually heating up like we've seen from other processors. Now, even with the Corsair H100i GTX cooling chip, we hit a maximum load of 71 degrees in a room with an ambient of about 26 degrees. This was reflected in our overclocking results as well. Anthony did manage to hit 4.6 GHz under stock voltage, but with a max temperature of 99 degrees. Coincidentally, our i5 appears to be an above average sample. Anthony was able to hit 4.6 GHz. Yes, it matched the i7. It peaked at 95 degrees, but thermal throttling kept it stable under load. After taking down one notch to 4.5 GHz, we hit a maximum temperature of just 81 degrees while fully stable with no throttling. We'd call that pretty good bang for your buck. I think that about wraps up all you need to know about the new series of processors from Intel. Like the past, these are an incremental upgrade based on iterative changes and new manufacturing techniques. If you currently have Haswell, Ivy Bridge, or even Sandy Bridge processor, then you won't need to upgrade at all. On the other hand, if you're looking to build a brand new system or find yourself running out of memory, or you absolutely need the extra number of PCIe lanes for something like NVMe SSDs, then Skylake is a perfect choice. It's not as insanely expensive as X99 since the chips have an MSRP close to the current Haswell ones, and you'll be future-proofed with DDR4 memory. The star of this launch isn't just Skylake's raw performance, but rather the technology it brings. 
PCIe 4.0, USB 3.1, and additional PCIe lanes are the features we're most excited for. Oh, and the processor features the new 530 series integrated graphics, but you really shouldn't be using onboard graphics with such a high-end unlocked processor. Add all that up and what you get is a new processor that's faster, more expandable, and costs the same as current processors. They also overclock a ridiculous amount if you can keep them adequately cooled. And this is something you'll need to think about beforehand, as all of the unlocked K-series processors will not come with the stock Intel heatsink. Have a cooler ready or your fancy new processor will just be sitting around, taunting you, teasing you with its potential performance. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments down below what you think of Skylake and if you'll be building a system around it. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. See you later.